Everyone likes a thrilling adventure story. We like to make them, and you like to see them. From time to time, we have shown you such exciting classics as Robin Hood, Rob Roy, 20,000 Leagues, and many others. But there's one adventure story that hasn't been told. It isn't a classic, but in its own way, it's quite a yarn. It's the Goofy Adventure Story, the thrilling saga of the Goofy family down through the ages. This chronicle contains many of their stirring tales, which have been handed down from generations of Goofies, told and retold many times from Goofy father to Goofy son. It's a real humdinger with thrills and excitement on every page. But let's start with the story of Captain Goofy who fought the raging elements to bring his sturdy craft through the treacherous waters off Cape Horn. All hands on deck! Drop the top tools! Head in the jib! Reef the boat! Heave ho, me hearties! Man the pumps! We'll ride out this storm! For my name ain't Ebenezer Goofy. Gee whiz, Bob. What a story. Yep, son. That's how your great-grandfather, Captain Ebenezer, brought his sturdy ship around the horn. Those were rugged days, son. Wooden ships. Iron men. <coughs> Notice the resemblance? <laughs> sure, Bob. You look just like great-grandpa Goofy. But, but tell me more about our family. Son, this old attic's full of the mementos of our adventures. Ah, yes, sir, e boy. Our family kicked up its heels from the very beginning. Wandered to the four corners of the earth looking for adventure. Why, there's always been a goof mixed up in history. Gosh, Dad, we goofies go way, way back. Look, over there. That's the suit of armor worn by one of your illustrious ancestors, Sir Cedric Goof. Who are the other two? Why, uh, one's your Aunt Matilda, and the other's <laughs> a pot-bellied stove. <laughs> I like him. <laughs> Come here, son. Sit up here with your old dad. Look, this book's full of all kinds of goofy family history. Gee, Manny, our family tree? Yeah, <laughs> you bet it is. A family tree to be proud of. Why, you can trace it back in an unbroken line to the earliest beginnings of our goofy clan. Gosh, tell me about them, Dad. Well, son, there was Horatio, the noblest goof of them all. Held a lot of bridges in his time. Gee, willikers! And Gaius Goofy, commander-in-chief of the Emperor's Royal Barge. was Eric, the Viking. He sailed the uncharted Arctic Ocean and often found himself far out at sea with only the stars to guide him. Star light, star bright. Guys, I wish I knew where I was tonight. <laughs> Three, boy. <laughs> and then, when knighthood was in flower, there was, uh... I know him. That's Sir, Sir Cedric Goof. Right, son. He carried the Goofy banner on high to win the hand of Lady Fair in the Jouston tournaments. <laughs> Bravo! But we weren't just daring adventures. No siree. We were great thinkers, too. Here's Leonardo the Goofy. He's worrying about what shape the world was in. To prove his theory, he sent one of his sons along when Columbus discovered America. Hey, I studied about that in school. Ow! Ow! Joe? Smoke. Match? Match. Yep, son, they were all adventurers, explorers, dreamers, and whoops, a 
and the captains of the ocean sea. Hold on, Pop. Who's that? Who, him? Well, uh, we don't talk about him much. He's old Black Goof, the pirate, the scourge of the seven seas. Golly, a real pirate? Yeah, but crime doesn't pay some. Old Black Goofy finally got it in the end. Eight bells, come and get it. Gosh, Dad. Then there was Pilgrim Goofy, came over on the Mayflower. <laughs> Spent a lot of time up in New England. Why, they even invited him to the Boston Tea Party. Yes, he was quite a party boy. <laughs> Made a hit with the bigwigs, too. Anyhow, he started the American branch of the Goofy family. Explorers along the Mississippi, trappers in the Northwoods, and adventurers always. Who's that, Dad? Who's that? Why, he's Wild Bill Goofy, that's who. Here he is, bringing covered wagons across the wide open plain. Jeepers! I wish I could hear his story. Well, if he could talk, he'd say... Howdy, strangers. Now, I ain't aiming to pick no argument or nothing. Understand this. Because anybody knows them old kivered wagons look powerful slow, creaking and groaning across them plains. Some of us settled in Oregon, in Nevada, and in California, and some of us went a little too far west. You know, son, your grandfather Amos, on your mother's side, he was quite an adventurer, too. Why, this here trunk is packed with souvenirs of his adventures. Gee willikers, look at all that keen stuff. A, a gun and those daggers and <laughs> look at the funny hat. That? It's an old time Opry hat. <laughs> How do I look? <laughs> you look funny, Pop, but but tell me more about Grandpa Amos. Well, old Amos was a jack of all trades. He went places and did things. Here, these are some pictures of his adventures. Golly, let's see them. Take this old tin tie. That's when Amos was up in Utah back in 69. So that's how his hat got squashed, huh? Yep, son. Railroading was too strenuous, so he took a job cashiering for Wells Fargo. And then he... Uh, oh, uh, that was about the time he went to see <laughs> uh, for his help. Oh, boy! Gramps was a sailor! You bet he was. The most sure-footed sailor that ever walked a poop deck. And uh, you might even call him an all-around sailor. Golly, looks like fun, Pop. Why, when there was an emergency in the engine room, Amos was the man they called every time. Yes, sir, he spoon-fed those boilers like a mother feeding her baby. I'm telling you, boy, he had a way with a steam engine and, uh, for the uh, bicycle. Look at here. This is Gramps when he had the most important job on the ship. Gosh, Pop, a harpoon us. Yep, the bigger the whale, the better he liked it. Whale-ho, Barnsy Boy!
a new adventure. Where to, Pop? Well, we lost track of him for months until we received this letter. And after a hazardous journey, I finally made it to shore on a beautiful coral isle with its waving palms, white sand, and friendly natives who welcomed me royally. I was honored at their native festivals and invited to stay for dinner. But somehow I ended up in hot water, a circumstance which made it necessary for me to drop out of the picture but I didn't come away empty-handed. Golly! Buried treasure? Yep, son. That pirate's gold financed your grandfather's greatest adventure, his safari to Africa. Gosh, Pop. Africa? What happened to him there? Well, son, here it is. Right in his own words, from his own African diary. November 23rd. After an uneventful voyage, I sighted Africa, the dark continent. Land of adventure, Africa the unknown, foreboding, mysterious Africa. November 24th, I landed on the romantic Ivory Coast. Rounding up porters for a safari, I pushed off toward the interior. November 25th, Safari. Across vast stretches of wastelands, through the forest of Mubasa, up the slopes of Mount Mokakia, down the valley of the Wubambugi, over crocodile-infested waters, onward, ever onward, pushed our safari out onto the open belt. February 11th. Onward, ever onward, uncomplaining of personal hardships, me and my faithful boys traveled lightly with only the barest necessities to sustain ourselves on our perilous adventure. <laughs> Suddenly, we reached the interior. Pitch camp near a water hole. And we're swallowed by the inky African night. During the night, our water hole was visited by many strange and interesting animals. One, a superb specimen of the hartebeest, obviously named because of the unusual design of his, uh, horns. <laughs> a handsome zebra also became thirsty. <laughs> Another rare beast was the spotted or laughing hyena. <laughs> then came a beautiful specimen of the warthog. And last but not least, a very rare and unusual species of... <laughs> I, too, uh, became thirsty, but suddenly there seemed to be a typical African dry spell. Followed by a flash flood, a phenomena of African water holes. So, after some difficulty, I succeeded in quenching my thirst. February 12th. Ah, oh, the African sunrise. At the crack of dawn, I leaped from my couch, ready for my morning plunge. Oh, the world owes me a woman. Be the light a little, that alone. <laughs> Here I come, ready or not. Last one ends an ostrich egg. With a brisk sprint and a perfect dive. Ah, oh, for there's nothing like a vigorous swim in a real cool pool to make one feel ready to meet the rigors of the coming day. <laughs> After a refreshing dip, I returned to my tent and quickly assembled my outfit and appeared dressed and ready for the hunt. Friday the 13th, 
Accompanied by my number one boy, I set forth in search of the biggest game Africa had to offer. Suddenly... <laughs> <sighs> Only a tick bird, who always makes his home on the back of the black rhinoceros. <gasps> ah, black rhinoceros! <laughs> this quaint little fellow pays for his room and board by warning his cumbersome companion of impending danger. <laughs> Lastly, I held my ground. I drew the bead as steady as my nerves would permit. Permit? Did I have a permit to shoot a rhino? It was either him or me. It was me. and started homeward, out across the open belt, oyster safari. Over crocodile-infested waters, up the Ubamboogie, down the slopes of Makakia, through the forest of Mombasa, back until we reached the Ivory Coastline, where I hastily departed, sailing into the tropic sunset, leaving with a fond ado, bringing to a close Amos Goofy's African Adventures. Now, son, we're getting closer to home. It's time to study our branch of the Goofy family tree. Yours and mine. And Uncle Joe's. But, but where is Uncle Joe? Well, your Uncle Joe just couldn't stay put for very long. You see, he had uh, itching feet. And they took him all over the world looking for adventure. Over hot desert sand. Freezing Arctic snow. From the boulevards of Paris. To the Sultan's Palace in Persia. Finally, Uncle Joe's itching feet took him down to Mexico to fight the bull. Here's what they said about him. A ferocious fighting bull has been vanquished by a truly great matador. Never in the history of the bullfight has there been such a magnificent performance. Golly, Pop, how did Uncle Joe get to be a matador? <laughs> well, that's quite a story, son. Let's start at the beginning. One summer, your Uncle Joe was driving south of the border, down Mexico way. Son, throwing the ball comes natural to us goofs. Yeah. Well, that's it, son. <laughs> now you know all about the Goofy family and their brave adventures. Yeah, but what have you done, Pop? I'll bet you're the bravest adventure of them all. Oh, shucks, son. I bet you're not afraid of anything, not even a, a, a tiger. Tell me, Pop, 
Did you shoot that old tiger? Shoot him? Heck no. Uncle Joe shot him. Why, if it had been me, I'd fight him with my bare hands. Oh, boy! I'd grab him with a tail. I'd swing him around, and I'd twist his arm, and I'd jump on him, and then I'd give him the old heave-ho. Gosh, you're the bravest dad in the, in the whole wide world. You could wrestle a bear. Mm, sure, sure I could. Or a crocodile. That's right, sure. Or anything. Sure, sure. Oh, boy, Pop, take me hunting. Sure, sure I will. Promise, Dad? Huh, Dad? Oh, sure, son, sure. Anytime. Oh, boy, Pop. Me will get a lion, huh? Uh, uh, what am I saying? Oh, wait a minute, son. Hold on. It's too late now. <clears throat> it's uh, time for you to go to bed. All right, Daddy. But remember, you promised. We'll go the first thing in the morning. Me and my big mouth. Shucks, I'm not the bravest bat in the whole wide world. Well, I'm not even brave. But I can't let the boy down now. Can't let him think he's old dad scared. But I made him a promise. Come on down, Daddy. I'm ready for my bedtime story. Bedtime story, that's it. I'll scare those hunting ideas right out of his head. I'll tell him a whopper. Well, son, this reminds me about the time I was tiger hunting in India. It was about as dark a night as this. Jungle noises the only thing breaking the stillness of the night. Eyes are piercing out of the jungle darkness from every which way. Me and my faithful pachyderm sitting our strength and wits against the fiendish and merciless cunning of the Bengal tiger. Gee, Dad, were you scared? Heck no, boy, I wasn't scared. Just mighty careful. Wow! the steaming, teeming jungle where the hand of man has never set foot. snack and a spot of tea before pursuing our hazardous quest. Tiger country. Unseen danger lurking behind every tree. Creeping, crawling danger ready to spring on its unsuspecting prey. The Royal Bengal Tiger. Lord of the jungle. A cruel, merciless killer. He eats nothing but meat. Man, he likes to eat. A man eater. Sharp talons that can rend a man to shreds. Its natural coloration blends into the surrounding foliage and becomes well nigh invisible. It's Roar the Voice of Doom. Meow. <laughs> Great. 
grimly we stalk our quarry. Suddenly, a spoor. Instantly, we are on the alert, pulse quickening, keenly aware to a sense of danger that pervades the atmosphere. <laughs> yes, sir, son. And that is how the tiger lost his stripes. Gosh, Daddy, hunting is dangerous, isn't it? You bet it is. But you go to sleep now, son. You're safe here with your pop. All right, Daddy. Night, no, Daddy. <laughs> it worked. He won't want to go hunting now. But don't forget, we're going hunting in the morning. For a tiger, maybe, or, or a lion. about the great outdoors. I'm going to teach you how to make camping, how to build a fire, show you all about woodcraft. Gee, swell, Dad. And then I'm going to show you how to hunt. Oh, boy, Pop. Maybe we'll get a lion, huh? Well, <laughs> we might get a rabbit. Oh, boy. Yes, sir, son. Why, if I'd been around in the good old days, it'd have been me driving that stage between Tobar and Lombok. A million dollars in gold dust. Bandits working behind every rock. Gee, haw, mate. Did I ever tell you about the time I was a race driver? 